Minnesota is Mrs. Eugenie Anderson, recently named ambassador to Denmark. America's first woman ambassador is congratulated by the Danish delegation to the United Nations. Distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Eugenie Anderson, United States Ambassador to Denmark. I believe that you're back home after two years in Denmark, aren't you? Yes, this is my first visit home. But well, Mrs. Anderson, you're aware, of course, that uh, there has been a great deal of criticism in America of the North Atlantic Alliance and of our general effort uh, in Europe. Now, uh, do you feel that we are spending too much money in Europe now? No, indeed. I think that what we're spending is very well spent for our own defense, as well as for the defense of Western Europe. You are a strong defender of the whole spending plan then in Europe. I think that the North Atlantic Treaty is the best means that we have for preventing aggression, for deterring war. And I think that it's absolutely necessary to build up the defenses of our allies as well as ourselves. You come from the Mississippi Valley region of the United States where people, uh, I hear, learn to be frugal. Uh, do you think the United States, uh, do you personally believe, the United States can continue to spend this kind of money? Oh, of course. I think that we have to be sure that our money is being well spent, and I think that we have to be sure that our programs are working out. But I think that today that we have assurances that they really are. And I believe that we have no choice but to build up our defenses and to help our allies to restore their defense forces. You've seen General Eisenhower lately, have you? Yes, he's been in Copenhagen several times. Do you approve of his job? I think he's doing a magnificent job. I think he's inspired the people of Western Europe and given them a new feeling of confidence and hope. Do you feel that he perhaps might be expendable for other jobs like perhaps the presidency? Well, I couldn't say. I, I could just say this. I think up to now that he has been indispensable in Europe. Do you feel that the rearmament of Germany is the real crux of the matter, that we must rearm Germany, and until then, uh, the rest of it really doesn't make much difference? Oh, no, indeed, I wouldn't say that. I think that the defense of Europe, I think that uh, Germany is vital to the defense of Europe, and I think that we must rearm Germany, but I feel that the problem is so immense that it's very important that we get ahead with the other countries and uh, move along with the whole problem as rapidly as we can. And uh, I think, however, that it should be pointed out that we Americans have always recognized the principle that a man who earns $1,000 a year can't pay the same amount of income tax as a man who earns $5,000 a year. Is there anything that you think we could do that better than we are now doing? Yes, indeed, I think that uh, we can always do better than we're doing, and I think that we all need to have a greater sense of urgency. I think that uh, for all of us, Americans too, that we probably will have to sacrifice much more than we have. Uh, your message is that, that we in America are not doing enough then. Well, that's very difficult to say. I can only say that I feel that there are many people here that don't feel that the matter is really so terribly urgent. <laughs> are we too rich? Well, uh, I don't think we're too rich, but we are terribly wealthy. <laughs> In effect, you believe that while we still have a long way to go, that uh, we are definitely making progress oh, yes, uh, indeed. in Western Europe. I think great progress has been made just during the two years that I've been there. Well, thank you so very much, Madam Ambassador, for being with us tonight.
she did set an example of what women can accomplish in politics. She certainly stepped out early uh, on in the time period, uh, in the time frame of when women did become involved politically and was recognized for her uh, intelligence, her abilities, what she could contribute to the political arena. And then, of course, her appointment to be uh, an ambassador to Denmark and then her appointment to Bulgaria also were just, um, I mean, phenomenal accomplishment uh, for a woman at, at that day and age. And a friend and I spent many wonderful evenings down here in Red Wing with uh, Eugenie and John uh, talking politics, and not only politics, but the whole range of public policy matters because we were absolutely captivated by Eugenie and John, their breadth of interests, uh, political, artistic, intellectual. It was really a fantastic discovery. And not only John and Eugenie, but the Hadeens, uh, Ray Hadeen was then living, and uh, the uh, Chesleys, of course, and the Dimian V. Gelatis, uh, the whole community here were so alive and so committed. And Eugenie and Hubert Humphrey and I and others were responsible for the fusion in 44. But Humphrey was then elected mayor in 45, got very busy being mayor and beginning his run for the United States Senate, actually. And we lost control of the Democratic Farmer Labor Party to what was then known as the left wing. And we took back control of the DFL, thanks to Eugenie and thanks to Hubert and thanks to Orville. And in 1948 was our smashing victory when Hubert Humphrey was elected to the United States Senate. And we reelected Harry Truman, president. And Harry Truman then proceeded to appoint Eugenie as ambassador to Denmark. The word that comes to my mind to describe Eugenie is dashing. She had such presence and uh, she dressed with such taste and style. I have a clear picture in my mind of Eugenie wearing a cape. <laughs> You got the sense of her flinging it over her shoulder, and that characterized her, her behavior and her be appearance at that time. We wanted her to be our candidate for Senate. What would that have been, 1958? We all went down to Albert Lee, and um, she was opposed by Gene McCarthy, and he won the endorsement at that convention. Very narrowly. Very narrowly. We were, we were, we were unhappy about that, but. A, but of course, we, we accepted Eugene as a, as a proper candidate and all. But um, I don't know what would have happened if Eugenie had gone on to the United States Senate. Uh, she, you know, she would have become immediately a center of attention and uh, so on. It would have been a great stroke for American politics to have had Eugenie in the United States Senate. But Eugenie herself is probably as responsible as any one single person for the fact that Orv agreed to run again for governor in 1954. So I can still remember walking with Eugenie, Orv and I with Eugenie, what a feminine that we are. I remember what she was wearing. It was a houndstooth coat with a cape, and it just showed her in such that perfect dignity. And she just turned to us and she just said, Orv and Jane, you have to do this this time. You have to do it for Humphrey. We can't have him running with somebody he can't trust and who can't get elected. Now, you probably can't get elected, but at least he can trust you in the campaign. You've got to do it. Anyone? I looked at Orv and I had a feeling he was going to do it. <laughs> she was very persuasive. 